Hello, my name is Manisha Laj Gupta and I run Ananda Permaculture Project. I'm here today to share with you a brand new series on sustainable architecture called How to Build a Sustainable House. If you want to learn more about earth architecture, about how to make a house which works with nature rather than against it, and how you can reduce your footprint when it comes to construction and building, then this is the series for you to watch. So remember to subscribe to our channel and see a series of videos around rammed earth, around different types of roofs, around different types of finishes, including lime plasters, videos on how to harvest rainwater, how to make your house energy efficient, and how to manage the waste on your property. So stay tuned and do remember to subscribe and click on the notification button so that you get notified every time we release a new video. We've built Ananda over the last 10 years and a large part of those 10 years we've actually been in other cities and uh, have been managing this project long distance. But now the time was coming for us to actually, you know, come and live here and really experience Ananda in person, day in, day out, you know, see the sunsets, see the sunrise. You know, Ananda is a place that has its own sort of character, own personality. It has, you know, such a story of its own. And I was determined that the house must add to that story and must build to that story. You know, I came across Ananda um, through friends. So I was looking up, you know, uh, about Manisha uh, and I came across her TED video and um, got to know what she really does. And it was really inspiring. I was, in fact, wanting to meet her and then suddenly I got a call and we met. <laughs> There is a popular perception that if you want to make something which is sustainable or something which is, you know, um, energy efficient or something which works with nature, then it has to be uncomfortable and unattractive. And that is the myth that we wanted to bust. We wanted to make a nice looking house, which is also sustainable, which is also energy efficient and fits in well into the natural habitat that we have. A sustainable house or sustainability in general uh, I feel I feel there are many many ideas and there are many uh, I guess uh, it's it's a, it's a word that's really used uh, in various ways and often abused uh, a lot I feel a lot of these ideas about sustainability are coming from uh, mental ideas but but to me it's not complete unless unless there's a deep connection unless there is a you know, unless you're really connecting to a place, a practice. So I feel to me, it's not about changing the world and it's more about changing yourself. It's about really looking at the context of people, of who we are, of how we are impacting our environment. Well, I believe a sustainable house is one which takes minimum energy and resources to build, minimum energy and resources to run, and minimum energy and resources to maintain. And, uh, you know, I was looking for somebody who had a very good sense of aesthetics, thought about a project from out to in, you know, keeping very much the landscape in context. And most importantly, was willing to take some risks. You know, coming to this setup, you know, obviously there was Manisha and there was this whole permaculture experiment. So, so there was already, I felt, you know, a lot to learn from. Already we were kind of participating in this process. And I was coming, you know, in my career to a point where, you know, I have done projects with a lot of different materials, you know, but nowhere uh, before, you know, where the client was so much open to this sort of idea of experimenting, you know, with with a, with a, such a clear brief, where where one can one allow one is allowed to kind of uh, do that experimentation, but also a very clear, crisp need of what the project has to be. So in Jitesh, we actually found the right partner because he has a very, very strong aesthetic sensibility. And uh, we wanted somebody who will complement us 
and be able to really deliver on the aesthetics of the house so i think that was a huge criteria a uh, second thing was somebody who had worked with earth and jitesh's experience at oroville and having spent such a long time and that strong connect that he has and he brought with him a wealth of expertise and knowledge around earth architecture and, and i've been wanting to try building with earth for a long time i've been uh, going to oroville for the last 20 years and i have uh, like deep connections with people and some of the processes there and rammed earth is something uh, i noticed there for the first time so here in oroville uh, where the temperature is very different it's like hot and humid mostly um, so they were experimenting with like really thin walls uh, and they uh, were doing it by stabilizing it with cement because we didn't want to use cement uh, we wanted to minimize the cement so so we started experimenting basically with lime and and it was a fairly successful um, sample that we got and and that was really exciting and the third was i think that he was looking for a project with which he wanted to experiment and take that risk and i think that's really what made it a great partnership so where materials was concerned frankly i had no idea all i knew was that we had to make something with earth I also knew that there was a lot of stone on the property and I wanted to offer that as one resource and one material that we could use to integrate. And then we saw there was stone that's available locally you know, and there was local uh, expertise available who could do uh, masonry in stone so we said why not do the foundations in stone. We said why not also use stone uh, masonry with with rammed earth. The moment we juxtaposed the rammed earth walls with stone walls, I mean there was there were a lot more possibilities. So. And then over time, I also learned about lime as a material that we could actually um, integrate and use, and the properties of lime and how it's such a good material to work with as opposed to cement. Uh, here was this project where we could really experiment in the sense, you know, we could uh, really sort of. see uh, challenge ourselves and and see if we can reduce the amount of for example cement concrete i mean if we really look at it how how bad concrete is how where it comes from what's the production what is the embodied energy uh, it's just that you know we don't we sort of keep forgetting about it because it's, it becomes a regular practice with all your contractors all your workers are trained with those materials and to redo that is is not easy you know in a, in a project I think at the beginning of the project I was had a better idea of what I didn't want than what I wanted. So I knew that I did not want excessive use of cement, concrete, bricks, uh steel. Uh, I didn't want something which would heat up in the summer or become too cold in the winter. Uh I was very clear that we must harvest all our rooftop rainwater. I was quite clear that we will recycle all grey water into our gardens so that that water gets used twice. Um very clear that we didn't want any air conditioning or any um you know heating in the house. So, and of course uh, most importantly I wanted to integrate it very well into the gardens and therefore having a cellar to actually store the food that we grow and be able to uh, have it uh, available to us for a longer period of time was a big uh, part of the brief as well. So so here here we are where we are really looking at it in a way from scratch you know like what are the possibilities how can we go about really you know looking at uh building a house with local materials with you know local uh, skills that we have how do we really make it contextual to 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 this to this place to the farm so um in an in a sort of a nutshell really that's for me what i thought was a sustainable house some place that we could live in even if everything else collapsed around us a place where we were not dependent on modern infrastructure we could be off grid where we could harvest our own water grow our own food which we already do and sort of live a, a smaller but much more um, you know self sustainable life than what we tend to live in the city so how we entered suddenly into the next phase of our career or where we could really say okay now this is this is how things should be you know it should be by default where we are where we are where the process of really experimenting becomes the engine the process of design 
this will be a project where we will use this opportunity to to reach out to younger architects to to other people who are interested in the sustainable architecture or who might just be really curious but you know want to just experience it and see what it can do Grand Earth has happened for the first time, I think, in this area, which is wonderful and which has worked out. So it's it's uh, now it's it's like how do we really take it forward and uh, and and share it with others? Like,